Hey guys, it's Jaeger262 and welcome back to the channel. I have another news video for you, but this time back to Armored Warfare, covering one of the new progression vehicles for the Spirit Haven season, which is coming sometime in the next two weeks. That is the South Pacific oriented season with maps and missions around South Korea and Japan. Now, I've already covered two release vehicles for the progression and one new premium vehicle, all from Japan or South Korea. Actually, one was Indonesian. But they did tell us when they released the whole informational article and promo for Spirit Haven Season that there were a couple of more high tier vehicles coming into the game. We know that the K1A2 Black Panther is going to be the tier 10 MBT for this line, and now we see the tier 9 AFE, or I should say one of them, which will be entering. And that is, of course, this vehicle right here, the K-153C. So you can see the article, this was developed in 2016 as part of the Kia Light Tactical Vehicle family of AFVs. It is a recon vehicle, much like the Crab at tier nine, but its loadout and why I'm so excited for this vehicle really lends it to be a tank destroyer, much like the Cornet, even though it is a tier lower. And so I'll leave a link to this in the description below so you guys can come and read the whole development and look at these pictures across the whole family of vehicles at your convenience. But for right now, the important stuff. It's going to be tier nine, like I said. It's going to have two Raylock missiles, or I should say missile launchers, which obviously have Raylock ATGMs on them. This is the same type of missile we saw on the Type 89 AFV that's going to be the new premium. Tier seven vehicle, which means you will require a lock on. They work just like the Javelin. So you will need to lock onto a target before they launch. They don't shoot straight up in the air like the Javelin, but that's neither here nor there. The interesting part about this vehicle is that aside from those two missiles, you actually do get a cannon. So it does have the same kind of profile with this automated turret here that the Crab does. Now, it's not a 20 millimeter cannon, but rather a 12.7 millimeter machine gun. Uh, you're in America, you know that as the 50 cal. So it is more than enough to shred AFVs at this tier. We saw when they introduced the 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine guns for all MBTs that as long as you're playing tiers three through five, those machine guns actually do damage AFVs at those tiers. So having a bigger machine gun, I imagine the same thing, is probably gonna do two to four damage per shot that penetrates and only against really light vehicles, of course, most of the light vehicles at that tier will not be chasing you, hopefully. They'll be all trying to evade MBTs and tank destroyers. But just in case you do run into a crab or a sphinx or even a cornet that just really wants to kill you, you can switch over to the 12.7 really quick and probably kill them with it. There's not a lot of news there on that. There is some news on the Raybolt missiles. They're balanced as the other Raybolts that we've already seen coming in with this season. So they're going to get 430 millimeters of penetration, or, or I'm sorry, where is it? It's 430 damage, 650 millimeters, 670 millimeters of penetration. They have a two second delay between both, but they will fly simultaneously. So if you're shooting at a target far away, you launch one, wait two seconds, launch the other one. As long as the other missile is still in the air, they will both hit the same target or wherever you guide them at the same time. Well, with the delay, but they will hit. It's confusing to say because the Cornet, if you know, can launch two missiles at once and fly them simultaneously. And I believe the T-15 can do that as well. For some reason, this is balanced to have the same mechanic, but they still add it to two second delay. Not sure why. And both will require a lock on. Obviously, if you lock on one target and fire both, it should still hold, but not really sure. 15 second reload on that magazine profiles this out to be a very strong tank destroyer. Now, the reason they lump it in with the Crab is because you get the advanced recon package, you get an improved loading mechanism for quicker fire rates, and then you get a nice new ATGM launcher and target lock system as you progress through this vehicle and unlock these upgrades. That will help you become a better scout for faster reloads, faster aim times, and obviously quicker spotting, or I shouldn't say quicker, but further. Now, they do have an active ability 
that will increase its camouflage temporarily by 30% by decreasing its mobility by 70% for a certain period of time. All that really means is that we've already seen this on some light tanks. As soon as you pop the ability, you will become almost invisible at long range, but your vehicle will be moving very slow to compensate for that. There's a couple of recon vehicles in the game that have this ability. I personally would not play this as a recon vehicle. It has the speed and armor profile of the Cornet, so even more lightly armored than, say, the Sphinx or the Crab at Tier 9. It's hard to believe, but this thing has less armor than those vehicles. It is just like a Cornet. I would just use this as a tank destroyer and use that recon package to give myself better feud range for sniping. However, that's not all we were going to cover today because, like I said, there are two vehicles being announced here, even though one does not have its own article yet, but I'm sure it will sometime this week or next week. That is the AS-21 Redback. Now, the AS-21 Redback is a South Korean prototype heavy IFV that looks a lot like the Martyr too. So here it is at a armor show in Korea in 2019. It uses a 40 millimeter auto cannon. And since it's a prototype, there's no other weapons or modules systems really on it. There's some 3D rendering showing some different stuff like you can see over here, different camos, different. Uh, this is a mine clearing tool here. This one has a remote turret with a 12.7 millimeter machine gun. As far as armor warfare goes, there's no news as to whether this will have any modular upgrades, whether it's going to get a machine gun to use just like the K-153, or if it's going to get ATGMs, or if it's just going to use the 40 millimeter like the Martyr 2 does. Or I should say, the Martyr 2 just uses a cannon. Obviously, it has a 50 millimeter cannon, not 40. Either way, I'm very excited for this vehicle and can't wait for the article to come out so I can learn more about how it operates in Armored Warfare. I think it's nice to have another heavy IFV in the game. Now, we do have the Rosomach, which is technically a heavy IFV. Its cannon is pretty brutal at Tier 8, but as far as matching the power of the Martyr 2, there's no vehicles in-game that I can think of. So this will be a nice welcome addition, and instead of being an expensive premium tank, it is progression. So I will keep you guys updated as soon as I learn more information about that or as soon as news about this vehicle comes out, I will make a video. So just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when that video is going to come out. Or give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. That's me know that there's more Armored Warfare players out here watching these videos and interested in the game. And I hope the community and the player base of Armored Warfare grows more and more as these updates and new vehicles come into the game does a lot to support the channel on its own just to do those two things but at the same time it lets me know that there are more players because right now player counts have been kind of low at least on the na side of the server so just trying to get more people into playing and i'm hoping this season will do that as always thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time